Hello and welcome back to another video. And today's video, I have something really cool to show you guys. So we are going to be making an environment with zero meshes. And I hear you thinking that's not possible, but it is with today's sponsor, Carry Engine. Basically what I did was I went outside on a overcast day. So there were no hard shadows. And then I just went into the forest and grabbed my phone, opened Carry Engine, tapped on the plus button and selected 3D GS which stands for 3D Gaussian splatting, which is a new method of photogrammetry that basically does not generate a mesh, but ju basically just um, 3D Gaussian splats that it will try to match to uh, the video that you take. In my experience, it was a lot easier than photogrammetry. I did find out that uh, probably the best way to scan this is to have your phone be from a distance where you want to view your final model from in your render. And we can look at them here on the Kiri Engine website. Basically, this is a really good example. As you can see, if I zoom in, it starts to fall apart a little bit. But if I go to approximately where I was standing, so something like this, and uh, from this distance, it looks absolutely uh, amazing. It looks pretty realistic. So for the scene, I'm just going to uh, crop this a little bit in the built-in editor. You can also see the fidelity here. So more red points means more uh, Gaussian splats and less means of course less. So I can add in a sphere here and then we can see the sphere there and I can kind of make this a little bit bigger by playing with the radius and then everything that's green will be uh, kept and everything that's red will be deleted. So I'm going to make this uh, this size and move it down a little bit. All right I think uh, this will do. And now I can just invert this and then delete those vertices. All right, now I can press done and it will generate a new 3D Gaussian splat file. And I'm just going to do that for all the other scenes. We can also use the brush to clean up these vertices here. Then I can just uh, go over to one of these files like this edit we made before. And we can just hit export and export it as a PLY. All right, now that we have our models downloaded we can go over the two ways to do this so either we can do it in blender in a really outdated version with a really outdated add-on so for this video i'm going to choose for unreal engine since that just seems like the easier option and i couldn't really get the add-on to work in blender anyway so really only my only option uh, but for you that might be different you need the uh, 3d gaussian splatting add-on or plugin for unreal engine and I'll leave that in a link below. You can just download it and follow the instructions on the page to install it into your Unreal Engine editor. So in this Unreal project browser, we can just go over and hit film, video and live events, and then create a blank project. Name this something like environment. All right, we don't need any starter content and we do want to have this ray tracing. All right, we can hit create and it will create your project for you and then just wait until it has opened up. So now we can just open up the content drawer right here and make a new folder called this uh, 3DGS. And we can just drag and drop in our files here. Uh, only do this once you have the plugin enabled, of course. So go over to plugins and search for the plugin right here, X3 3DGS. Just enable that and restart your project. All right, so now I can actually drag and drop this in all right so now they have imported and they should so look something like this make sure to save your assets and now we can just drag in these actors into the scene by the way the controls in unreal engine work pretty much like uh, blender's walk navigation so if you've ever used that you can just use it in unreal engine as well it should be pretty easy to pick up you could just hit a right mouse button and then you enter walk navigation and now we can just uh, position all of our assets. If your Gaussian splats are looking pretty white and blown out like this, you can just uh, select these, then scroll down on the right here until you find, uh, let's see, with relighting. Just enable that and it should look normal. So for these plants, I'm also going to hit relighting. If you don't want to scroll down all the way every time, you can just uh, type relight here. We'll be able to find it pretty easily. Keep rotating around it because it might be difficult to see from some parts. Sometimes like uh, something like this will happen. All right, 
uh, I think right now would be a good time to set up our camera so we don't add too much. So Cine Camera Actor. And then we can just uh, move this around until we have a few that we like. We can play with the aperture and all of those things. So maybe try out a different one. Or something like... Hmm, let's see, this forest scene. Or is that, oh, that's the same one. Maybe this tree. Let's see if we need to relight this with relighting. Yeah, something like this. And then just preview it in the camera as well. Let's see. Needs to be a little bit bigger. And make sure to check from your camera's point of view. And this is looking a lot, lot better. Yeah, okay. So I think something like this looks pretty great. Mm, so yeah, I think that's going to be it for the render. I'm just going to render this out and then import it into DaVinci Resolve and I just composite it there. So to render this, we can go over to content and then right click, go over to cinematics and create a level sequence and just open this up. Uh, we want this to be one frame long. So one of one. And then we want to use our camera as that cinema camera. And then we want to just hit this render button and then just hit render low. All right, so the issue was that I hadn't imported my camera into the sequencer, uh, but now it has exported a image, uh, just like we would expect. So just to do that again, you had to just drag in your cinema camera into the sequencer and then you can press this button and then just render local. All right, once we have that done, we can open up DaVinci Resolve and then we can just drag in our render. Then we can just drag it into the timeline here and go over to the editing tab and we can preview it here or we can just uh, jump straight into the color tab. Uh, but for me, I always like to add in some effects. So I always like to do that in a adjustment clip. So just drag that in and then go open to the open effects and look for some cool effects here. Some of these are only for the paid version, but you can get pretty far with just a free version. And that's basically how you can make an environment in Unreal Engine with zero meshes. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I hope you download Kiri Engine to try out their amazing feature. Link will be in the description down below. Also a link to my Patreon where you can support me. And then I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.